morning, everybody. Thanks for braving the weather to come out and see us all. Um, thanks for the intro. Today, I'm going to talk about meaning, or understanding meaning. Um, I'm going to talk about briefly my own search for meaning, why I think meaning is important, the 10 sources of meaning, and how you can look for and apply meaning so that you can go away on Monday and perhaps use the, the lens, what I'm calling the lens of meaning to, to look at the work you're doing at the moment. Why meaning? Because meaning and love are the primary motivating forces for human beings. So I feel like in design, especially in human-centered design, everything we do is focused on humans and understanding humans better so we can design for them better. And if meaning and love, but specifically meaning, are a mo primary motivating force for human beings, then personally I'd really like to understand it better. And this, this is all about my mission to understand meaning so that I can use it in, in design. My personal journey with meaning started when I was um, a teen. This is a book that my dad got me. It's fairly dog-eared. I think he bought it for me because it had cool photography in it, but I was fascinated because it had about over, hundreds and hundreds of people's ideas about what the meaning of life was. Um, there's what the one I like best is at the bottom on the, on the left there. The first sentence says, why are we here? Perhaps just to ask that question and to answer it in as many wrong ways as possible. Sounds good to me. It's kind of what I did. I tried um, various kinds of meditation, you name it, yoga, I did it. I also, in contrast, spent some time working on one of these, or several of these actually, in the playground of the mega, mega rich, except I was an employee, unfortunately not doing so much playing. Um, while I was working on the super yachts, I did things like make tea with seven spoons of sugar, uh, do detailed cleaning of already clean furniture with a cotton bud, which was the most tedious and meaningless work that I've ever done. Um, I also, at one point, walked onto the onboard disco at, when my 6 a.m. shift started the morning after my boss had had a huge party to find the floor completely covered with American um, $100 bills. What happened next, I can talk to you about later if you like. That's another whole story. Um, that's my husband in the jacuzzi on the top deck when the boss wasn't on board. He was pretty sure he'd found the meaning of life right there, right then. And I thought I'd found the meaning of life here. This is um, Mallorca in Spain swimming in the incredibly warm, beautifully crystal clear Mediterranean waters. It was great. Um, I met lots of interesting people on my travels, including these folk here, and these people. Wherever I went, I, uh, people um, seemed to find meaning in similar things. So family, friends, food, time together, uh, in the work that we do, that kind of thing. Personally, I've found meaning and purpose in human-centered design. At the distillery, where I work with Mark Bunsen, we focus on designing meaningful change for people. We look for deeper values, deeper motivations, and we design for those. We focus on the human part, and that's what makes it both rewarding and successful. I'd even go so far as to say that what we do is human values-centered design. I find this work highly fulfilling, and I'm sure you guys all feel the same. This is my, uh, my confidence statement for the evening. Meaningful design is successful design. This is, this is what I found in the work that we do, and that's what I want to share with you today. A very public case of this, uh, of meaning as success, is Eat My Lunch. This company started in 2015. The founder, Lisa King, noticed a problem. One in four Kiwis Kiwi kids, sorry, live in poverty and go to school without lunch every day. So she wanted to do something meaningful to change this. So she came up with a simple proposition. Buy one, give one. For every lunch you buy, we give a lunch to a child in need. So fairly simple proposition, but definitely focused on meaningful change. Uh, this became a profound recipe for success. They started in 2015 in her home kitchen, making a few hundred lunches. That's Lisa and co-founder, the chef, Michael Meredith. 
But within the two years since then, they've made over a million lunches and donated half a million of these lunches to kids in need. That is massive growth, growth and massive impact. They've moved to a large commercial kitchen and expanded to Wellington. Most telling of their success, though, in my opinion, is that, they, um, that people have to wait eight weeks, eight weeks, before there is room for them to volunteer in the Eat My Lunch kitchen. So people wait weeks in order to give their free time to help this business. What a powerful effect this simple business idea has had on people. And what's the reason for their success? Lisa King says it's meaning. We've created a vehicle for Kiwis to help other Kiwis in a meaningful way. There it is, meaning. We really need to crack this meaning thing. The father of meaning, Dr. Victor Rolf Frankel, um, v Victor Frankel explains that meaning, meaningful products, sorry, success like happiness is the unexpected side effect of one's personal dedication to a cause greater than oneself. Meaningful products, services, systems and experiences move people. It comes down to motivation, to what motivates people at the deepest levels. Research has found that people are motivated by intrinsic rewards versus extrinsic rewards. That is, they are motivated by things that are deeply important to them rather than things that perhaps other people say are important. They are motivated, motivated by things that they find meaningful. A good thing to note is that millennials, as a gen generation, I'm sure there's a few millennials here, um, have been shown to want more meaningful products, services and experiences. We are today, as Hayden mentioned, um, overwhelmed with choice, so the things that are meaningful stand out. Uh, we are increasingly designing for and working with millennials. In our work lives also, we are increasingly drawn to organisations that are clear about their purpose, that provide meaningful places to work, and uh, pl places that make us feel like we are making a meaningful contribution. The great thing about meaning, from a design perspective, is that what we find meaningful is reasonably consistent across ages, cultures, genders, and eras. Though there are reasonably, um, sorry, though, though there are me um, millions of variations in the little details because we're all individuals and we're all slightly different, um, there are sort of like ten sources that I've found, been able to kind of distill it down to that I think are relevant across across all cultures, ages, etc. Um, we've been finding meaning in the same kind of things since humans will be a were able to write and beyond that. So once you understand meaning and how it is found, you can apply it in design to great effect. Okay, here we go. Ten sources of meaning. First up, though, credit to Emily Esfahani-Smith, who wrote the book The Power of Meaning. She talks about four pillars of meaning, and I've included those four in my ten. Okay, first up, purpose. Purpose is a quest, it's a vision, it's a calling, a journey, a sense of duty. Uh, William Damon, a, de a developmental psychologist at Stanford, has said that a stable and far-reaching goal, one with an outward focus, that's, that's what purpose is. So it could be cleaning up your local waterways, being a good parent, increasing literacy rates, or even some small things. People with a strong sense of purpose have created movements, movements that have changed the course of history. Eat My Lunch have a strong sense of purpose. Their purpose is simple and clear to understand, which makes it really compelling for people. It's also a purpose that makes a great contribution. This is number two. Uh, contribution is closely related to purpose. It's about focusing on things beyond ourselves, which is a key to meaning. Contribution is about others. Ironically, to find meaning for ourselves, it's best not to focus on ourselves. Eat My Lunch also have done this really well. Uh, as the famed therapist, author, and thought leader Esther Perel said recently, the best antidepressive is doing work that matters to people, because then as a result, you matter to them. Number three, tribe. Humans are naturally tribal animals. 
Most obviously, tribe means family and friends, but it goes far beyond that into any arena where you have things in common or shared values. People come together around varied parts of their identity, their age, gender, race, religion, hobbies, and passions. Naked human chess, for example. I haven't participated myself, but it certainly has brought these people together. Tribe is about belonging. It's about a sense of community, and it's very, very good for us. UX Homegrown is about building a UX community, and all of us here tonight belong to it. A sense of tribe unifies New Zealand when the All Blacks play, and it's what we feel in our favourite local cafe or bar if the staff are doing a good job. A sense of tribe is what unites us, and it's also what motivates people to contribute. At the distillery, we did research into what motivates people to do donate to a particular cause. Um, we, we were looking to make donating more meaningful for people. And we found that a sense of tribe or a connection to the cause or the people that they were donating to made them far more motivated and made them find the experience more meaningful. At the moment, I'm also working on an independent project where we're developing a mood-aware wearable device to help young people who suffer anxiety and depression. By using the lens of meaning, we were, um, we were able to ask users about their sense of tribe. We found that isolation was a major factor in their mental health struggles. So we built in systems to build a human support network to counter this. So it was technology bringing people together to, to build that sense of tribe and connection. Next one is transcendence. This is the most lofty of the sources of meaning. It's the part that religion played for most of us in the world up until fairly recently by connecting us to God. But for the non-religious, uh, it's often about nature, the universe, philosophy, beauty, inspiration, big picture thinking. We can reach transcendent states through drugs, of course, and space travel, if you can afford it. Um, we often transcend when we face huge challenges, like a death in the family, giving birth, or when we face our own um, health, yeah, poor health or mort mortality. Transcendence is everything beyond the mundane, beyond the small everyday details. It's when we connect to something much bigger than ourselves. Brands often t tap into this feeling of transcendence to motivate customers. It appears whenever the service, product, or experience involves the exquisite, the exclusive, the exhilarating, and the unique. Motorcycle and car brands often use it. And so too do Air New Zealand. This is actually an ad for the Air New Zealand Queenstown Marathon. Come to race, leave inspired. Storytelling. Um, Hayden mentioned. Um, so we're already familiar with how important storytelling is in design. Stories are the natural way that the human brain processes information, but storytelling is more meaningful than that. Stories are how we make sense of our lives and our worlds. They're also about bearing witness to other lives and being seen ourselves. We tell stories about who we are and what is important to us. And often we figure this out during the telling, not beforehand. We tell, tell stories to understand ourselves and our worlds. The most compelling stories have an aspect of vulnerability or challenge to them. Stories are meaning makers. They create empathy, and empathy helps drive connection and change. Conferences are about storytelling, and social media, obviously, is also about storytelling. Creativity, one of my favorites. Um, humans are inherently creative, though some of us don't believe it, thanks to having a hard time at, in art at school. Um, here's an image of people building with Lego. Um, it was Oliver Eliasson's artwork, which was in the Auckland Art Gallery last year. It's amazing how freely people um, build and be creative when they're given permission to. So people were showing up young, old, you name it, in groups, family groups sometimes, and building these crazy cityscapes, completely unplanned and unprovoked. Uh, this piece evolved through an amazing variety of creative, whimsical cities. 
Creativity is also how we express ourselves through fashion, art, design, theatre, dance, performance. When we are driven to express ourselves into being creative and enjoy other people's creativity. In a UX setting, it's about giving users the opportunity to, to customise their experience, about allowing for personal expression and enabling creativity. Another favourite, um, people can be highly motivated by growth and learning, their own and others. Every teacher gets a buzz out of this, I know I do. Um, kids, students do, unless it's been squashed out of them. Uh, being able to grow and change, to learn new things and helping others to do so can be very meaningful for people. It's about practice, mastery, challenge and achievement. It's about becoming who we dream of becoming. Uh, IDEO recently did a redesign of the service for Scotiabank and they said, imagine a bank where you are the top priority. A concierge greets you and dedicated staff assist you only when you want it. You're in an ecosystem that is designed around advice and learning, not just transacting, where services respond to what's in your mind rather than what's in your account. So IDEO were clearly tapping into wanting to make the, the branch experience more meaningful by building in growth and learning. The next one is connection, which is probably the, the most important, maybe. Um, this, in red, this is the artist Marina Abramovic. Abramovic. She's um, a performance artist, and this piece is called The Artist is Present. So what she does is she just sits, this is in the, the MoMA in New York, uh, and is absolutely present to whoever is sitting before her. The public sort of take turns to sit before her. This is often their response. The work has a very powerful effect. We are driven to seek connection and are power powerfully moved by it. It's the opposite of isolation and it's the opposite of self-absorption. At the distillery, when we were interviewing bank customers about why they were still going to the branch for transactions that could be done online, people, particularly the older customers, told us that they wanted to connect with other human beings. They could do the transaction online or they could pop into the branch and chat, in other words, share stories, with another friendly human being. Never underestimate the importance of human in-person connection. Second to last, the, the thread that runs through all of this and which help, helps us as designers is the idea of investment. Now this is not the financial kind necessarily. People invest themselves when they find something meaningful. And in reverse, when they have invested their time, energy, money, and sense of self in something, that thing becomes more meaningful to them. Take social media, for example. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, they're really kind of empty and meaningless on their own. But when we invest our time, our thoughts, our memories, our purpose, our dreams, our relationships, empty apps become a vehicle for meaning. The final one is pleasure, and this is a tricky one because it comes with a catch. People are drawn to experience and seek pleasure, whether it be Thai massage, definitely one of my favorites, or chocolate, which is my daughter's favorite, or simple pleasures like reading a great book or drinking a good coffee. When a person can't find a deep sense of meaning, they distract themselves with pleasure. This is Viktor Frankl again. So this is the catch. Pleasure, um, pleasure is meaningful when combined with some kind of contribution or combined with an outward focus. So that, for example, creating delicious food to share with others, designing beautiful clothing for others to wear, learning how to give a really good sports massage to, to ease somebody's pain. Um, alone, the drive to feel pleasure just for yourself can be hedonistic at best and selfish at worst. Um, it can also distract, ourself, uh, distract us from finding truly meaningful things. Uh, important to note is that most services and products and experiences combine several of these. Um, for example, at the distillery, we've done a lot of work with libraries, lots of different libraries. And in a world where we carry around Google in our pocket, libraries have been forced to evolve to stay relevant and be of value. We've found that libraries really aren't about information anymore because we, we all have information. 
They're about connection. They're about connecting people with skills, knowledge, and the people they need to reach their, help reach their goals and purpose. Libraries are also about enabling learning. They're about storytelling in the broad sense, and they are a community space where people can feel welcome, can feel they belong. Libraries have a very meaningful um, um, contribution to make to our communities. What we find meaningful, personally, has a lot to do with our identity, our sense of who we are, both individually and collectively, as individuals, groups, organisations and projects. We are drawn to do things which support our sense of self. So uh, identity is an action. We be and we do our identity. This is nicely summed up by Nikki Hare here. Identities are social. We don't make up our identities. We join identities by following in the footsteps of or teaming up with others. So we identify with things we find meaningful, we engage with things we find meaningful, and meaning supports our sense of identity, of who we are, and what's important to us. So, where do you find meaning? This really is the question we need to ask of our users, our projects, our organisations, and most importantly, ourselves. Um, in terms of research, so if you're conducting some design research, at the distillery we use a bunch of different tools. These are just to name a few. Things like the five whys, um, Liz Sanders' do, say, do, make, which is about what people say is sort of only a small piece of the iceberg. What they do, and more importantly, what they make, tends to be the, the bulk of it, and that's where you can get to the, the most meaningful um, answers. The object exercise is about having people bring in an object that they can talk to, rather than perhaps talking to, about themselves. Um, and that, that distance tends to mean that they uh, speak more freely about things that are meaningful to them. Card sorts are great for kind of stacking about for what's important. And my favorite, the awkward silence. When interviewing um, users, being able to hold a pause and let that awkward silence sit so will often mean that a user will, well, so the person you're interviewing will jump in to fill that silence in a sort of a spontaneous, unplanned way, and that's often when the jewels come out. Tomorrow, Miriam, which I'm really looking forward to, will be talking about the future of UX research. Um, it's likely that everything I just mentioned, um, all the tools we're using, will become perhaps less important because we're going to have AI, bots, big data and machine learning to, to find a lot of answers for us. But I think the key thing to remember is that as practitioners we still get to ask the questions. So remember, remember to ask about meaning. If you have an existing product, service or system, it's about giving your customers, your users, your people, an opportunity to share stories, to connect with others to work towards their goals, to invest something of themselves, to transcend the mundane, to experience and share pleasure, to express themselves, to give to others, and to be creative. So wherever you see an opportunity to um, design these things in, you're adding meaning, potentially. And one of my favorite topics, the future. Our near future is likely to include increasing automation, particularly of mundane tasks, major changes in the nature of work, and possibly increasing unemployment, rising levels of inequality and loneliness. Uh, as technology changes our lives in dramatic ways, and the arenas of work, career, and family shift and change, I think meaning becomes even more important. In nicely summarized, by Derek Handley here. Uh, people want meaningful lives. We want personal connection to use our skills to contribute and to be a part of a community. And here it is again. Purpose, contribution, tribe, transcendence, storytelling, creativity, growth, connection, investment, and pleasure.
Thank you.